Anyway, SmackDown, they were hitting about 162. Uh, and then Uncle Howdy came out, and it, it was all downhill from there. Uh, SmackDown on Fox averaged 2.056 million viewers. That was the fast overnight rating, according, according to Spoiler TV, down slightly 32,000 uh, from last week's overnight tally. By the time this show goes off the air, usually a little bit after that, by around 3.15 Eastern time or so, we will have the numbers to both SmackDown and Rampage, but... What did you think of the show if you had a chance to see it, Jim? And what did you think about the debut in the physical form of Uncle Howdy? So, how long has Bray been back? Two months? Yeah. In two months, to design Uncle Howdy, they put him, they put the character, we don't know who's behind it, maybe it's a woman, but we'll just call him he for now. Um, they put him and a top hat, and a leather suit jacket. And, I don't know, it just, and he just stood there and laughed. I'm all for, for mysteries. And I'm all for giving you breadcrumbs to keep watching, and all these things that seem to be part of the Triple H creative regime. But, they are drawing this out way too far. And, for to run out this far, it's gonna have to be a huge payoff, and I would doubt it's going to be worth all of this. It's just, it's starting to take too long. It's relatives staying too long over the holidays. It's it's time. The for those who didn't see it. The segment itself was not bad. L.A. Knight is a fantastic talker, and he has had enough of Bray Wyatt attacking him. And one of the things that they showed on the show that they there was really not a follow up to it at all. Bray Wyatt or I'm sorry, Uncle Howdy, I guess, had kidnapped L.A. Knight. So they show this social media footage of L.A. Knight in a chair bound uh, gagged and, and tape over his eyes, and then they just kind of leave it. And then it's like, well, that's what happened. And then there's L.A. Knight who just comes walking, and the first thing I thought of was, much like Billy Gunn getting his fingers cut off by Swerve Strickland, can we have an explanation or maybe, like, we hear doors bust in of, like, police or security saving these men? I mean, I know it's pro wrestling in 2022, but is it way too much for me to ask that there's actually, like, you know, some explanation on how these people were either kidnapped or at the very least found and released? Would that be too much to ask? I'm not sure how I feel about kidnappings in wrestling but i will say this if it's going to be a kidnapping it should be a big deal and not just a brief clip coming back from break yeah how did la knight get out did they let him out did they drop him off in an alley did they let him off at his house at the arena uh, you know there's if you take it one step further it's it, it may be too ridiculous for even, even for, I know it's just wrestling, but they need a few more details. And there Uncle Howdy stood as Bray Wyatt revealed to L.A. Knight, no, it wasn't, that wasn't me who was attacking you. See, I'm right here. And then Uncle Howdy comes out onto the stage and, as Jim mentioned, with the top hat, with the jacket on, and he grabs his lapels and ha, 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 for 50, I counted it at 52 seconds. Yeah. The reality is he was standing there with the camera cutting back and forth between him at the top of the stage and Bray and L.A. Knight in the ring at least 90 seconds. It oh, felt yeah. like an absolute eternity. I it was, so, it was so bad. Even Jeff Jarrett said, that guy's laughing too much. <laughs> I can't, I could not believe it. And it's like, I know they, I swear they do it on purpose with some of the backstage skits where they seem to leave the camera on for just like one second too long to the point where it becomes uncomfortable with a person just standing there staring off like this. And it's like, okay, cut, cut new camera to switch to something. 
I cannot believe that they thought that that was a good idea or that that would would not get old quick after 10 seconds, let alone, hey, stand up there for a minute. It's it's kind of scary here because I believe in Triple H as creative director a lot more than I do Vince McMahon. And I also know that he's not going to snap his fingers and all of a sudden we're going to be back in 1986 in the Charlotte Coliseum or or something like that. I get that. I get where we are in 2022. But like the balance, they have not been able to find the balance at all, especially when it comes to, to Bray Wyatt and this whole deal and. There's been talk that Triple H hasn't been happy with with certain things and certain people that he has brought back. I don't think that's got anything to do with this Bray Wyatt situation here, but how can you save this when it looks like everything is barreling towards live action characters and a weird group around him that is going to basically blur the line every time out there, much like he did between reality and reality in wrestling and then the wrestling reality which is you know completely out the window so i'm guessing maybe we'll get a match between la knight and bray wyatt maybe at the royal rumble and then after that it'll stretch all the way to mania probably is my guess we're gonna see another several months of other characters or mysticism or just whatever trying to be trying to be spooky and mysterious when actually it's just very ponderous can you think of anybody on the roster or with a good relationship right now who you could take and drop into that wrestlemania match that will make people interested is it john cena again and i know he's been linked with possibly other people we uh, we've heard Lesnar and Gunther. We've heard a lot of different people. Is there somebody already on the roster right now who you think would be a good fit for this? Because I know it's not Seth Rollins. I've lived through that one enough. I never want to see that one again. And unfortunately, with Bray Wyatt and a lot of people, I'm kind of like that. You know, and Cody, my God, Cody might be the most entertaining to go along with it, but I hope they have much better and different plans for him when he comes back. And I would believe that they do. At least I want to believe that they do. Can you think of anybody who you could drop in there and have a match for Mania that may be somewhat entertaining? Well, you know, I could think of people. I don't think they're viable options. I mean, Kevin Owens is a wrestling genius. You could drop him in there. But, I mean, he's got other things going on. He's he's not a likely candidate. Um, there's history there with Braun Strowman, but he's on the other the other network. So, you know, I just, I, or is he, I don't even know. Anyway, no, he's on SmackDown. He could, I guess you could do Braun. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I, I can't think of anybody that you could drop in that it would help. Um... Maybe you're just going to build to Bray versus Uncle Howdy, and it's going to be some sort of psychological, cinematic, whatever. I mean, so many people in wrestling have this desire to be movie directors or to be horror writers or whatever. And it's like, wrestling is just wrestling. I think you can, there are just certain things that just don't work. With a Bray Wyatt, and if you want to go in this direction, because we've seen the house burn down and the deal with Orton and all, all this stuff that we've had with Bray Wyatt over time, to me, it's like maybe it's like baseball where you sign a Joey Gallo because you only want him to DH and you're only going to use him at X time against this pitcher in this, you know, this particular park where he does well. And I, I know I'm picking on Joey Gallo a lot here, but my God, I can't believe he's making $11 million. But can you, I mean, to me, if you're going to spend money and justify this, is it better to only break him out quarterly? Is it better to only build towards something 
major with somebody when you can pull off the spooky? Because I feel the same way about Dexter Loomis in a different form where I can be greatly entertained for short spurts with Dexter Loomis in the right situation. In NXT, there were times where I got a kick out of him that way. Would it be better to just take a look at, at Kevin, or Kevin Owens, at Bray Wyatt, look at his character, look at the creative that he obviously wants to do and believes in very much and just go, okay, We'll use you when we have the chance to. We'll keep you on ice because we don't want you to go anywhere else. But maybe every four months, every six months, you'd go ahead and do something like that as opposed to trying to make this a weekly character. Yeah, I think you want to keep him special. But here's the thing. For every long Uncle Howdy section segment, for every music box with goo at WrestleMania, for every red cage match, with Seth Rollins, Bray Wyatt sells a ton of merch. None of these things have had any effect on any of it. We can sit here and criticize it, but we ain't the ones cashing those big fat merch checks. Regardless of all of this, he is a big star who people buy his merch and none of this matters. It is. If you want to look at numbers and what he sells, this stuff works. It's insane. And that's why I just think from a creative point of view, is keeping them off and, and well, still being able to utilize all that. I'm, I'm the next generation above you. So I was 20 or so when Papa Shango was out. And I thought Papa Shango was the stupidest thing in the world. I was embarrassed. But... If you were a kid, you were scared of him or whatever, and now you're nostalgic. You and I aren't 10 years old. So maybe a 10-year-old or whatever, someone who's younger, thinks Bray Wyatt is, is the coolest thing ever. You know who I think is the coolest thing ever? Kevin Owens. I still think he's my favorite professional wrestler right now. He's one of my favorite humans. He was nice to my kid. He was just a great guy when he was in Ring of Honor and, and just it was a, again, a, a really great guy. And unfortunately for SmackDown, he wasn't there because of travel issues, which not only screwed up this past week's SmackDown, but it also screws up next week's SmackDown because he they taped SmackDown uh, for next week after this uh, th this past one here. So unfortunately, he's not going to be on either show. Hopefully they insert him as much as they can because the idea of him and Cena against Sami Zayn and Roman Reigns is awesome, especially on TV, even if we don't get a finish out of that. That's a hell of a way to close the year with a really fun match. Yeah, they're ending the year on a bang and getting people hyped up. Cena's back, Royal Rumble, Road to WrestleMania. You know, it's now begun. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> And Brian Hawks. I, I don't. It's what pretty got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh. I have never. I have. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.